This is as close as we can legally get to Area 51. I'm pretty, I've been pretty nervous right now. Yes. Because just, I know there's guys up there and I know they've got guns. And I know that like they don't want us here. It's, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. And there's no, nothing to worry about as long as you know where the border is and you don't cross it. Yeah. If you cross that border, they have the right to shoot you. Yeah. They haven't shot anybody, but it doesn't mean they can't make an exception for you. This might be the first. <laughs> it might be the first time. <laughs> So here we are in the middle of the desert in a small town called Rachel, Nevada. Why are we here, Matt? Because we're gonna go to one of the most well-known, top secret military facilities in the world. Which is? Area 51. I was kind of hoping you'd be wearing a black suit. Uh, yeah, I was gonna sunglasses. ask you about that. I mean, you do the men in black thing? Yeah, it fits Wait. the theme, you know. Yeah, Aliens. but I mean, we're, come we're gonna be right. just going to the place. We don't work You for know what? It. You go to Area 51. I'm just gonna go to this bar, because I look good. There's a bar? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to Area 51. For those who don't know, Area 51 is a top secret military base in the middle of the Nevada desert. Over the years, people have claimed that the government has been using this remote location to test recovered UFO technology, dissect alien bodies, and develop exotic energy weapons. Despite the secrecy surrounding the location, Area 51 has been featured prominently in pop culture, showing up in movies, Welcome to Earth. TV and video games. While the government has declassified some of the projects it has worked on there, much of Area 51 remains shrouded in secrecy. Mike Rugnetta, can't believe I just ran into you in this bar. We just both happened to be at the Alien. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What's your impression of Area 51 since you've been here? It's, I mean, one of the things that's I think the most interesting about it is that there's not a lot around. Right, it's, I mean, you know, you sort of understand it as this middle of the nowhere secret place, but it also has this massive cultural presence, you know, like most people know what Area 51 is, but you come here and it's like, it really is, it's far off the beaten path, there's not a lot of things that sort of announce its presence. Well, the whole idea of Area 51 is it's a place where the government can test things without anyone looking in. This is Glenn Campbell, and he wrote the book on Area 51. Literally, he wrote the Area 51 Viewer's Guide, a comprehensive manual of all things Area 51 related. So you have a lot of land between the base and public land. So you could cross the border here, you can walk across the border here, but you would still have to hike 15 miles just to get to the perimeter of the base. How do you know all about this? I looked it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah? yeah? No, I think you... I, think you... Uh, I was... Back in the 1990s, I was the Area 51 publicist. I took it upon myself to tell the world, hey, there's a secret base out here. I know, sir. I'm Montel. Montel. Good, Good day, sir. You. And I was wildly successful. Uh, at the beginning of the 1990s, virtually never, no one had heard of Area 51, and by 1994, it was a public phenomenon. Area 51 first came to the attention of the public when a man named Bob Lazar came forward and claimed to be a former employee at the facility. Throughout the 80s, Lazar appeared in newspapers, magazines, and on TV, claiming he worked on reverse engineering alien spacecraft at Area 51. But Area 51 didn't really come to the attention of the wider public until five unnamed contractors and the widows of contractors filed suit against the U.S. Air Force and the EPA. They claimed they were exposed to toxic materials at Area 51, but the case was rejected due to lack of evidence, since all the information about the base was classified. After all, in order to prove that you were exposed to toxic chemicals at your place of employment, you first have to prove that your place of employment exists. This secrecy, along with Bob Lazar's bizarre accounts, fueled Area 51's image as a hotspot for classified UFO activity. So I first came here because this was a place where you could see UFOs on a scheduled basis. You just come here on a Wednesday, the story goes, and you could see UFOs. So I came on a Wednesday, and I looked up in the sky in the general direction of Area 51, and I saw some fantastic lights in the sky. So this is what the UFO literature told me I should see, and I actually saw them. And if I had gone home after that one experience, I would have thought I would saw a UFO. The trouble is I came back the next night, Thursday said, night. Thursday night, <laughs> which where I'm not supposed to see them. And I saw the, these light, these bright lights again. And at that point, I could see something I hadn't seen the first night, which was a stream of smoke coming off of each of these 
plasma balls. And I'm thinking to myself, these are supposed to be UFOs with anti-gravity technology burning element 115. Why do they have smoke coming off the top of them? And I thought, well, are they diesel powered? <laughs> Is it a diesel engine? And at that point, I put the two things together. Well, these are probably flares of burning magnesium, and they're probably on little parachutes or balloons or something where the hot uh, exhaust can keep them buoyed up. And right then I realized, okay, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing bombing activity. I'm seeing military activity in some bombing range far beyond Area 51. People didn't understand that this was also an active war games area. So you had battles going on here on a nightly basis. And a lot of those battles involved some bright lights in the sky that could be interpreted as UFOs. At that point, I had explained the UFO stories. But I still saw that there was this secret base out there. There was this real base that the government didn't talk about. And that alone became fascinating to me. That, that cried out for attention. I mean, I thought, why doesn't the world know about it? And should the world know about it? So I turned from a UFO watcher into a government secrecy activist. Look, do you want to go check it out? Well, or you want to get as close as we can? <laughs> sure, we can do that. All right. You can go, go to the, some signs and see where they're telling you not to go. All right, let's, let, yeah, let's, let's go to where we can't go. Sure. <laughs> so it's 13 miles to the border, and then we'll encounter some keep out signs. We're going to keep out. That's as close as we can get? That's as close as we can legally get. OK. All right, where, where are we, Glenn? We're on Groom Lake Road. This is one of the main roads into the base. Uh, many Area 51 workers will take this road. There's also a bus that brings Area 50 workers in on this road. We got a car coming. Is this yeah, some funny. employees? <laughs> it's probably someone coming out of the base, yes. And had you always been fascinated by UFOs beforehand? Or? I was uh, fascinated by UFOs as a kid. Uh, and that's mainly because I wanted them to come and take me away. What didn't you like about where or, or when you were? Oh, I, I wasn't very happy as a child. I was, uh, I wanted to escape. And uh, back in those days, you did a lot of reading and I read some UFO books. And I found them very, very in interesting and tantalizing. As I grew up and as I became more confident in my teen years, I didn't need the aliens to rescue me anymore. As we're approaching the border, we're going to see these two guys in a SUV up on the top of the hill. They're always there looking down on the border. They're on their side of the border. They're always there looking down on who's ever approaching the border. They're not going to do anything unless we cross the border. Now, at, at one point, I mean, wasn't the uh, use of deadly force authorized? Yes, there are still signs out here that say use of deadly force authorized. So. Uh, technically, they can kill you if you cross that line. As far as I know, no one's been killed. I'm not going to test it myself. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, not, let's not test it. That's true. So I'm going to come around the corner and we'll see the signs. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll drive right up to them and I'll stop. Oh, oh right here. Yes. Oh. This is really unusual. There are two cars on the hill instead of just one. Maybe they're, they've called out reinforcements just for us. I, I mean, this is really uh, okay. You exciting want... and a little, a little terrifying. Should I, should I be scared? <laughs> y yes, you should be scared. Okay. <laughs> if you cross the border, you should be scared because it's going to ruin your day. So, uh, who are these guys here that are watching? Okay, so these are hired contractors. They don't work for the government directly. They work for a, a private company which provides security out here. So these, we call these guys the camo dudes. Okay. It's kind of unusual to see two vehicles there, but there's always a vehicle parked there when you come down. Can we get out here or? Yeah, we can get out. This is as close as we can legally get to Area 51. This is actually the Nellis Range. So we would have to cross another 10 miles of, of desert before we even get to the border of Area 51 itself. How many times have you been here? Oh, uh, hundreds of times, probably. Yeah. Hundreds of times to this border itself. Most of this border is marked only by these orange posts every few hundred yards. So if you were walking out here in the wilderness, it would be very easy to stumble across this border. 
Let's go look at the razor wire. I want to touch the razor. Is, is that safe? It is actually kind of sharp. But as I, as I say, it's only for show because you can just walk around the way raise the wire. It's just a kind of a visual, uh, a visual symbol to tell you this is where the border is. Touch of the razor wire. I could wire. jump right over this if I wanted to. Yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> Those guys in the hill, they're yeah. on, they're on their side of the line, so they they have every right to be there, and we have every right to not be there. But we can still wave and see if they'll wave back. It's hard to tell. We can walk right up there in the hills. We see that the uh, yeah. border is right there, so it's safe to walk up into those hills. When I, when I was a younger man, I've uh, walked up, I went up to the base of those rocks, and snuck up to the base of the rocks, and then poked my head up. <laughs> <laughs> see if I can get a shot of them. <laughs> What'd they do? They just, they move their truck back real fast. Okay. <laughs> but I knew where the border was, and it goes up to the top of those rocks, so I knew I could walk up to the top of the rocks. And, and shoot right across at them. I actually have no problems with secrecy, with the, the government having a facility like this. I understand that, uh, that uh, national defense involves keeping secrets. It, it involves developing weapons that no one else knows about. I just think there needs to be limits to the secrecy. I think 10 years from now, we will know what was going on at Area 51 today. And that's how things work. After 10 years or 20 years, things are declassified and we'll know. And it, it, it was some sort of conventional equipment, some sort of drone, some sort of thing that, that we're using now in Afghanistan was probably uh, tested out there at Area 51.